Are you prepared to make difficult care decisions for elderly loved ones? Do you have the necessary advocacy skills to ensure your loved ones receive the care they deserve? Is there a resource to help families determine how to go about choosing a nursing home for a loved one? Hello, my name is Attorney Ramsey Barawi and welcome to Your Money, Your Life. In this segment, my guest is Joanna Liefer, Senior Care Advisor and author of Almost Like Home, A Family Guide to Navigating the Nursing Home Maze. Ms. Liefer holds an MBA and a Geriatric Scholar Certificate from the Consortium of the New York Geriatric Education Center. As founder of Elder Care Giving, Ms. Liefer advises families on how to obtain the best care for older loved ones. She also sits on the board for the East Side Council on the Aging, a not-for-profit organization dedicated to improving the quality of life for older people on the east side of Manhattan. Joanna, welcome to Your Money, Your Life. It's great to have you on the program. It's nice to, say, nice to be here. Now, you recently wrote a book called Almost Like Home, A Family Guide to Navigating the Nursing Home Maze. Mm -hmm. Please talk a little bit about what motivated you to write this book, especially at this time. As many people in our field are, people in the field of elder care, I'm aware that there hasn't been that much information that is available to people, and particularly dealing with the scary issue of nursing home care. Many people feel as though it's the last point before you go on to the grave, and yet people aren't aware that there are people who go on and can thrive for periods of time in a nursing home. But the big concern is they have to know how to look. First of all, they have to understand that they can't wait for the last minute. Elder care has become such big business now that it's not something you can just enter into, like walking into a movie theater. You have to have an understanding of how the legislation is, what to look for when you go into a nursing home, and how to request the best care. So I wanted to put together a book that could help people make the best choice and get the best care for their loved ones. It's my impression that your book is about basically choosing the right nursing home facility. Well, why do you call that process a maze? It is a maze. There are so many new regulations that are affecting the nursing home industry. The nursing home industry is regulated. It's regulated on the state and on the government level. And a lot of people are not aware of all the intricacies of all the laws. In addition, there's just so much you have to be aware of in order to make a choice. You have to, it's not one size fits all. Every nursing home is slightly different. Some nursing homes have special equipment or have special programs. For instance, Alzheimer's care. Alzheimer's is a very broad uh, name for a lot of different symptoms. For instance, in the early stages of Alzheimer's, you, have, you need certain types of care. And in the later stages of Alzheimer's, you need different type of care. You just can't lump it all together. So to go into a facility that offers Alzheimer's care is not really giving you a total idea of what you need. The same is for a lot of other conditions. For instance, some places specialize in having ventilators. If you go into a facility that doesn't have ventilators, you're not doing your loved one any good. There's other issues like weight. There is such a thing as bariatric care. These are people who are very heavy, obese. If you don't have the equipment to work with these people, they're not going to be happy. So people have to understand what their needs are before they can go and make a decision on the kind of care they need. Is there anything, Joanna, is there anything that uh, family members can do in terms of choosing the right nursing home uh, well in advance before a family member actually needs that nursing home care? The most important thing a person can do is to start looking early. Nobody wants to go into a nursing home. Okay, how, er, how, early do, how early should people be looking? You said early, but what do you mean by early? There are certain uh, legislations a lot of people aren't aware that many people 
can get on Medicaid and therefore they don't have to use up their monies paying for a nursing home. Nursing homes can be very expensive. Nursing home care can average between $10,000 a month and in some places here in New York, $25,000 a month. A lot of people can't afford that for very long. However, there are ways of transferring your funds to another, a third party that could probably be a family member. But all of this has to be done five years prior to a person going into a nursing home. If it isn't done five years prior, there's going to be a penalty period in which you are going to lose your money. And this, of course, is a big shock for a lot of people when they think the money they put aside for themselves, for their loved ones, for their grandchildren, is suddenly going for nursing home care. So it's good to start planning five years prior. Then there's the matter of looking for the nursing homes. You have to decide what kind of care a person would need, what your own personal needs are. Now, a lot of people don't think about this. They all think about their medical care. But nursing homes are like any neighborhood. They involve different types of people. For instance, here in New York, we have a lot of ethnic neighborhoods. You can find facilities that offer care primarily for Asian people. They offer Chinese food. They have staff that speaks Chinese. So this is something you have to consider. There are religious requirements. Some facilities are more sensitive to different uh, ethnic uh, habits. People who are kosher need to have a kosher facility. So you really have to think ahead, not only for what your medical needs are, but also what your social needs are. And that can help a lot in making the care much better for you. If, in fact, as you stated, that there are these facilities that uh, cater to different ethnic and religious groups, can family members go out and research all of this information? Can they also research a bit more about the nursing homes? And if that research capability is available, what are the credible sources that people should be looking towards? That's an excellent question. There's a lot of different things people can do. First of all, you can ask around. That's probably the best resource you have. There are so many people out there who have had experiences with nursing homes, and everybody has a story to tell. In addition, you can always go to professionals, go to your local uh, senior care center, uh, to doctors. These all have experience as well. In my book, Almost Like Home, I make suggestions on different ways you can look for nursing homes. I would say the first thing to do is go to the yellow pages, look in at the listings for nursing homes in your area, and draw a big map of where these fall from where you are living, because you want to be able to make access, be able to get to these places. Then start looking into these homes. You can look online. You can look at advertisements. One big resource that people often are not aware of is that the government puts out a survey on every nursing home that is, uh, get, takes federal funding. And they go in every 12 to 15 months and survey to make sure that nursing homes are complying with all the requirements. This is the best way to determine how a nursing home can care for you. Are you referring to something called Nursing Home Compare? That is the summary. That is the summary. That's a very good point. There, nursing home surveys are individual surveys, which uh, sometimes are pages long and are very difficult to read. Mm -hmm. But they have a lot of information. What the government does do is they summarize that information and you can find that on Nursing Home Compare, which is an excellent resource. However, sometimes it's worth actually going to the survey and taking a look at what they say. Can I give you an example? Absolutely. Okay. Some, a, survey, uh, a nursing home survey is supposed to tell you about the quality of care. All of this is a little subjective. Now, of course, if somebody is falling out of their chairs regularly, 
this is really something that everybody can agree should not be happening. Or if, some, if several people are found choking, this is not good. But there are other things that you could consider that you never thought you could before. For instance, I once looked at a nursing home survey that had gotten a pretty good rating. But I had noticed that there was one instance where there had been a, I guess the word is a complication. Two men had died on the same day and their bodies were put in a morgue. On the day of their funerals, the bodies were shipped to the independent funeral homes. But unfortunately, the bodies were switched. So each family was suddenly faced with dealing with an individual who was no longer who was not theirs. Now, this is not really bad care in a nursing home, but I think it's very traumatic care for any person who has to deal with this situation. So I probably would not want to send somebody to a nursing home where the staff would not be able to recognize me, dead or alive, and I would not send any of my family members there. So that's the kind of difference that happens if you actually look at a nursing home survey. Wow, that, that kind of negligent behavior, that shouldn't really be tolerated. That's, it is. It's pretty, it's pretty traumatic. It, it's very traumatic. Uh, let, me, let me move on to another topic. It's my impression that caring for aging loved ones often involves making, as you've pointed out, difficult decisions about when to begin searching for a senior living facility and how to select the right one. Would you talk about the emotional, financial, and physical toll that these types of decisions can have on a, on a family? Absolutely. Most people don't want to think about aging, and they particularly don't want to think about nursing home care. People really equate nursing home care with end of life. So what most people do is they don't think about it. It's like a, a small child when they put their hands over their eyes. You know, they can't, they don't think anybody can see them. It's not true. It's going to happen anyway. So it's best to start early. What most people end up do, doing is waiting until the last minute and suddenly they're thrown into a situation where they have to make a very important decision very quickly and without all the information. The way most people end up in a nursing home is when a loved one goes into the hospital. If a person has to go into a nursing home, sometimes the hospital will give you only a very short time in which to make a decision on a nursing home. Every nursing home has to request that you give them the name of five nursing homes that they would like their loved one to go into. You can give more if you want, but five is the number. Many, hardly anybody can think of five right off the bat and know anything about them. So right there, you have been, you suddenly had to make a decision with very little information. And that's when mistakes can be made. People ending up in nursing homes that are really not good for them and then have to figure out how to make changes while they're there. This is what so often happens when I take on a case. We have people who are in nursing homes that don't quite work for them, and then we have to find out how to make the system work for them rather than putting them in a place that would be best for them in the long run. You mentioned earlier that people oftentimes believe that nursing home care is kind of like end of end of life care. Right. Uh, it, would you? characterize that as a misconception and then I have a second question and that is do people have other misconceptions about long-term care in a nursing home? Well first of all nursing home isn't the only type of care there is and nursing home we have to face it if you go into a nursing home you need special extra care you go into a nursing home because you need 24-hour care but it's not like you wouldn't need nursing need some kind of care at home either We've already in the situation, and the idea is to find a place that can best serve you when this happens. Now, there are people who go into nursing homes, and then they leave. 
Sometimes you go in for a certain amount of time. Some people, for instance, want to redo a house so that a person can live in the home instead. And so it's a temporary situation. Or you can go to another place. So it's not necessarily that you're going in there till the end. But we do have to face the fact that most people go in because they need very specialized care. What most people don't think about is that sometimes nursing homes are better than an alternative. A lot of people who end up staying at home are very isolated. I've seen cases where people actually start to thrive in a nursing home because they're with other people. Uh, every nursing home has to have programs, so suddenly there's stimulus. You have meals that are cooked for you. Many people, when they live at home, don't eat properly. So sometimes a nursing home can be a place where people can thrive or is thrive more than they would at home. You mentioned earlier that the decision to move into a nursing home is oftentimes made uh, as a result of an illness, and that's usually for a family a crisis situation. Right. Crisis situations oftentimes laden with emotion. Yes. What can people do to remove that emotion in order to assure that good decisions are made? Well, of course, the best thing to do is start looking early. What everyone should do is probably, if I could have everybody take a course in nursing home care, I think that would be the best solution. Like people, when they are going to have children, they often take courses on what to do when, when children are first born. People should understand a little bit more what's to be expected and how to go about looking for a facility. Right there, you have eliminated a lot of the traumas that are involved. Having to deal with a person who is declining is a trauma enough, but to understand that you are in control of the situation and to know how to make right decisions can really help. Another thing that's very important with a person who goes into nursing home care is to understand how to advocate for an individual. Once you put a person in a nursing home, it's not like closing the door and everything's going to be okay. It's an ongoing procedure. You have to make sure, or somebody else has to make sure that you as that person that you assign that they get the right type of care. You have to understand the signs that indicate that a person is thriving or declining. And that's just as important as getting a person into a home. It's making sure they get that, the right care when they're in a home. I know that you believe that when a family is looking for a nursing home for a loved one, that they they should look around. They should see what's out there. Absolutely. Um, when people go, when family members rather go visit a nursing home, what should they be looking for? When they look for a nursing no, home? No, no. When they when they're at a nursing home and they're visiting. Okay. What, what should they be observing? What should they be looking for when they visit? Uh, I have a checklist that you can download from my website, which is www joannaleifer.com, but there are plenty of checklists you can get. The first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that the place looks clean and well kept. That means on the outside as well as on the inside. I would say the first thing you should look for when you walk into a nursing home, first of all, the security, that there is somebody at, the, at a front desk that is checking to make sure that strangers are not just walking through. It's also a two-way street. You don't want people to be residents to be walking out. Uh, that's called eloping. A lot of people are not aware of that term. But if a patient walks out and leaves, that's called eloping. You want to make sure people don't elope regularly. That's dangerous. The next thing you want to do is look around and see what the residents look like. Are they just sitting there? Are there people who are just sitting in bathrobes, their hair uncombed, they look slumped over? These are people who are not well cared for. You want to look and see residents that look alert, engaged, look as though they are well respected. 
you want to be able to see that they are interacting with each other. When you go in, you should definitely look at the different floors. Do never settle for going to just one floor. What a lot of nursing homes do is they take you to the one floor, which is called the rehab floor. Many nursing homes have a rehab floor where people just go temporarily to get better. That floor usually has the best looking care. These uh, me Medicare pays for rehab and, as, and people who are getting Medicare, sorry, I'm gonna say this again. A rehab floor is a floor that is paid for by Medicare. Medicare pays more money for care on a rehab floor than Medicaid or private people pay on other floors. So that's often a floor that's furnished more nicely. You want to make sure to look at other floors as well, to make sure that the other long-term care floors are just as nicely decorated. So that's the next important thing. And the final thing, or the final important thing is, to follow your nose. You want to know how the place smells. If you smell unsanitary conditions, obviously these people are not being cared for properly and you don't want your loved one in there. Those are some of the major points I would look for if somebody were touring a nursing home. Joanna, do you think it's advisable for family members who are visiting a nursing home to talk with the residents in that nursing home and, and ask them questions in turn about things such as, you know, what are the meals like, uh, what, uh, is the staff friendly, is the staff attentive, how do they feel about being in the nursing home? Do you, do you think that's something in, that someone should ask? I think that's very important. Everybody should be able to talk to somebody on the floor and get an idea of how they feel about being there. But you have to be careful as well. Another point I would like to make when you have a nursing home tour, as you're being guided through the floors, you should know how the tour guide interacts with the patients. If somebody, a patient who's sitting out is waving to the per to the guide to see get her attention and the guide walks by you know that there isn't a good relationship going on also if the guide stops in front of a room and suddenly walks into a resident's room without requesting they can come in this is a sign of real disrespect these are where these people live you just don't barge in on them so that's a real indication of how the staff inter interacts with the residents. But definitely, if a resident is sitting out, it's good to be able to come up to them politely. You know, they are still people and ask them if they'd be interested in talking to them. Most people are very interested in hearing and in, in expressing their feelings. What's even more important sometimes is just sit in the lobby after you finish the tour and just look around. See who is there. Talk to the people who are there, the residents, their family members. Get a sense of what's going on in the lobby, and that can give you a lot more of an indication of what's going on. All very good hints. Excellent information indeed. Uh, how important is it, Joanna, that uh, a nursing home has been accredited or not accredited, for that matter, by the Joint Commission on the Accreditation of Healthcare Organizations? Is it important or is it not important? It's an, it's, this is interesting. There are different types of facilities. A nursing home is accredited by Medicare and Medicaid. The, if Medicare and Medicaid does not agree on the care that is being given, they will no longer finance it. And they might be able, the, the facility might be able to still work privately without getting Medicare and Medicaid money, but I would never want to go to a place that would not uh, be accredited by Medicare and Medicaid. Now, there are other facil facilities that are not nursing home facilities that are private care, but they're not regulated the same way as nursing homes are. 
So I'd be very careful about any place that's calling itself a nursing home that does not accept Medicare and Medicaid. Joanna, please tell our viewers uh, how they can learn more about your book and, and where they can uh, purchase that your book. My book, will. Uh, you can go to my website and order it from there. I will also be uh, on Amazon, uh, but I would go to my website and, and order from there, and we'll make sure that you get what you want right away. Joanna, that's a good place for us to stop. Okay. Whether it goes by the name of a nursing home or a long-term health care facility, choosing the right facility is one of the most important decisions older adults and their families can make. We learned that it is important to thoroughly investigate the nursing home, ask questions about the staff's credentials, the facility's licenses, and issues surrounding meal preparation and diet. Also visit several nursing homes. Make observations regarding cleanliness and safety. Do the residents appear clean, groomed, and well-fed? Are staff members caring, friendly, and supportive? As Joanna Leifer explained, it is important to start the search process early. Doing so avoids making decisions in crisis. However, finding the right home is only the first step. The next step is the transition into the nursing home while effectively advocating for your loved one. Today, Joanna Leifa shared with us, if properly planned, a long-term stay in a nursing home can represent a new beginning. That, of course, requires finding a place where your loved one can live comfortably and securely while enjoying socially stimulating activities. To make an informed care decision, educate yourself. A good place to start is by reading Joanna Leifer's must-read book, Almost Like Home, A Family Guide to Navigating the Nursing Home Maze. In closing, I'd like to thank my guest, Joanna Leifer, author of Almost Like Home, A Family Guide to Navigating the Nursing Home Maze, for her participation on this program. Joanna, thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. And as always, thank you to you, our viewers, for watching Your Money, Your Life. My name is attorney Ramsey Barawi, building your trust.